Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Executive VP of TMC, uh, Terashi. Thank you very much for taking your valuable time to attend this session. Last week, uh, we had a joint press conference on collaboration with Panasonic. President Toyota said that uh, toward 2030, 5.5 million units of electrified vehicles as a target. Uh, and that message was conveyed by him. So uh, Mr. Abe, the managing director here, uh, talked about the history of hybrid technology. And then at the last week's press conference, we, uh, the president talked about this uh, uh, collaboration on the battery development. And today, we would, I would like to take the floor to explain our challenge to the further wide use and development of the uh, electrified vehicles. Actually, Z vehicle, 1 million units, PHB hybrid, 4.5 million. Those units targets were supposed to be mentioned by myself, but already during the Q&A on the 13th, Mr. Toyoda already mentioned that, those numbers. So I would like to give the details of our, our challenge toward achieving these goals. So in the Q&A, uh, the President Toyoda mentioned about the CAFE and ZEV. Zero emission vehicle, ZEV, is based upon the regulation requirement. So the global car growth, according to the regulatory uh, the uh, momentum, f the level is maybe less than 1 million units per annum. In addition, every year, 85 million units or the 90 million units uh, are the conventional gasoline. Uh, driven vehicle, including the diesel vehicles. So conventional energy-based vehicles are huge volume. But CAFE, a CO2 emission control, is applied uh, as a regulation. We have to cope with those two requirements. So we are developing uh, the car which satisfies the ZIV requirement and uh, one uh, to satisfy CAFE. In order for the ZIV vehicle to uh, satisfy CAFE, it will take some more time. Quite often we say that hybrid vehicles were excluded from the, uh, uh, the environment-friendly vehicle category. But uh, it's not the ZIV category per se, but uh, the hybrid vehicles are important strategic vehicle to satisfy the CAFE. Now, I would like to talk about the form to which Toyota aspires to uh, build a sustainable society and customer smiles uh, the, uh, through offering three values, safe and security, inspiration, environment. Uh, the, we will achieve sustainable growth by steadily forging a solid footprint. So today I will talk about electrified vehicles and we will apply the same fundamental principle stance. On the other hand, in recent years, Lifestyles and then technologies are changing rapidly through innovation, and the customer needs and the industries are changing uh, largely as well. And the uh, automobile industry is not an exception. So this is really uh, the, uh, the cars are facing the profound transformation that comes once only in 100 years. But Toyota considers it as a chance. We can offer the new value which we never thought of. And this is a rare, wonderful opportunity to expand our business in order to build ever uh, better cars. We will sh uh, make a strategic shift to focus electrification information and intelligence. Today, I would like to focus our approach initiatives toward electrified vehicles, electrification. To reduce vehicle CO2 emission, electrification is essential and necessary. We already announced the Toyota Environment Challenge 2050. To achieve this goal, we are making steady progress. On the other hand, what types of electrified vehicles is needed? is not decided by environment regulation nor manufacturers uh, like us, but customers and market finally decide. For example, if you want to buy an EV, if you want to just one, uh, buy one car, or FCV, or PHV, or hybrid vehicle, that is a customer's actually need 
depending upon the customer needs, final decision will be made. But in addition, different countries are considering to introduce a new regulation, tax system, and other the uh, system, which will form eventually a large market. For example, in Norway, let's think about a situation like uh, a country like Norway. Norway has the world number one electrification ratio of the vehicles. Almost 50% of the vehicles are already electrified. About of that total, about 20% are BEV in Norway. So the, when you look at the best 10 models of the vehicles, EV and PHV and hybrid vehicles are the major ones in Norway. But why in Norway the electrification of the vehicle is advanced so much? Because the country size is about equal to that of Japan, but it depends upon the uh, the uh, hydro power generation, and it has a, a domestic crude oil production. And so per capita GDP and the total income is almost double of that of Japan. So affluent lifestyle available in Norway. In addition, the abundant uh, power generation by hydropower and uh, they could prefer, uh, uh, they have a preferential treatment to the electrified vehicles in case of Volkswagen Golf. Uh, compared to gasoline engine, EV car is cheaper because of a tax uh, benefit given to uh, the uh, EV cars. All the toll roads are now free of charge. Or charging stations uh, were established in the parking lots in uh, cities in Norway. Or they have dedicated lanes available only for the uh, uh, electrified vehicle and so on. So the running costs also prefer the uh, electrified vehicles. And for the first time that the 20% uh, of the BEV is achieved, by all these special measures, the 50% or so is achieved uh, for electrified vehicles, and BEV ratio of 20% is achieved. Because a uh, unique feature is that uh, Norway is a country that doesn't have an automotive industry. It has a small market. So that kind of a policy, as well as the national measures, can be implemented based upon that underlying factors. The, what about the Toyota's business in Europe? As to the electrified vehicles, almost 50% in the last one year. So we are about to reach 50% of electrified vehicles in European market. So that's how we already advanced in terms of electrified vehicles in uh, Europe uh, on behalf of Toyota. Well, let's uh, look at Japan. Following Norway, uh, Japan is world number two uh, in terms of electrified vehicle population, which is 30%. But we don't have a low energy sufficiency rate. So we have to consider the use of diverse energy sources uh, for uh, like uh, hydrogen, electricity. And so therefore, we like to promote the use of HB as well as FCV. Norway number one, Japan number two, in terms of uh, electrification ratio. Uh, and But uh, third and other uh, countries of the world only have less than 10% of the electrification of the vehicles, and other countries should follow Norway and Japan. And in case of Japan business, almost half of the Toyota cars are so-called electrified vehicles category. As a mass volume uh, producer, manufacturer, uh, to sustainably supply vehicles uh, suitable for the customer needs, it is necessary and sufficient condition for us to increase our diverse lineup of the electrified vehicles. To popularize the electrified vehicles, we believe it is necessary to take all encompassing uh, approach to products, technology, infrastructure to achieve this goal. We set the specific milestones for electrification from first. Uh, to 20, from 2020, BEV rollout in earnest by Toyota. Specifically, in 2020, we were introduced a mass produced self developed BEV strategy uh, 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 launch in uh, uh, 
in China. And uh, uh, for both Toyota and Lexus uh, brands, uh, we would like to gradually uh, launch uh, those products globally in Japan, India, the US, and Europe. And by the la first half of the 2020s, uh, we uh, plan to introduce BEV of more than 10 models. And Around 2025, electrification uh, diversion will be available for all vehicle models. And uh, the, the, uh, we would like to expand this electrified vehicle lineup like Prius and Mirai. And all the models will have the electrified variation around 2025. We aim to the, uh, discontinue engine on the models. And then in 2030, over 50% of the vehicles sold by Toyota will be electrified, and 10% or more will be e e BEV and FCV. And to estimate the global uh, sales volume according to the current global Toyota sales, electrified vehicles will be more than 5.5 million units in total, including HV, PHV, uh, and BEV and FCV. And as uh, ZEV is not using gasoline, such as EV, uh, BEV, and FCV, will be more than 1 million units. So we would like to deliver those uh, electrified vehicles to the customers worldwide. In order to achieve these milestones, we need our all encompassing approach to product technology and social infrastructure. First, product approach. So far, as shown in this chart, uh, this is an image of a product development by us. Uh, so taking into account the driving performance and technological features, uh, they will use the BEV for the short distance, and FCV is for mid-range distance. However, as I said earlier, that society is going through a major change, and product needs of customers in market get uh, rapidly diversified. Thus. The, we should not just stick to the uh, categorization of the past. We need to diversify electrified vehicles to promote wider use. First, EV. To supply, uh, uh, of course, it uh, uh, is available as a mini, mid uh, size to the large vehicles and buses and trucks and so on. But uh, uh, it has a broader application, like commercial and the sharing services. We will introduce diverse products together with Toyota Group companies. So EV Common Architecture Spirit which is the company uh, we uh, founded, which will develop the, uh, the fundamental technology for EV. I'd like to elaborate on that later. Next, I'd like to touch upon FCB. Quite often when I talk about this, uh, people say, oh, Toyota, is it shifting from FCB to the uh, EV? No, not that the case. We would like to cover both directions. In 2014, Mirai sedan type was launched but for a passenger car, uh, uh, SUV, and Lexus, luxurious vehicles will also be available on electrified version and so on. And buses and trucks and commercial vehicles will also be covered. Together with the Toyota Group companies, we would like to apply this, uh, the fuel cell technology uh, to many different industries. And lastly, I'd like to touch upon uh, uh, HEVs. Now, uh, Toyota's uh, traditional uh, hybrid system will be relooked at and further refined from the perspectives of fuel efficiency, cost, and driving performance. For example, we might uh, focus upon sports type, which accelerates well, or the high power type, which has uh, excellent towing capability. And also for emerging markets, one motor or mild HEV, uh, such as affordable uh, hybrid. Uh, you might refer to the LS, uh, which we we just announced the other day, which will be uh, including the multi-stage hybrid type to cope with the variety of the needs on the part of the customers. Let me talk now about uh, technology electrified products. Uh, back in 1997, Toyota announced its I iconic uh, Prius, and uh, over the 20 years, uh, Toyota's sales of electrified vehicles have reached approximately 11 million units worldwide to date. Uh, now we cover 90 countries 
countries and regions. And in terms of product R&D, we have 4,500 personnel uh, with approximately uh, sales volume reaching 1.5 million units. What does it mean? Well, 90 countries and regions. That really spells out for the fact that Toyota's electrified vehicles have been approved by the customers uh, in terms of quality, durability, and reliability. Uh, speaking of this volume, uh, 11 million uh, units. Uh, and the people uh, who back up that volume in R&D, 4,500. Um, and we have accumulated electrified vehicle technology and know-how, uh, which is a huge asset to the company to date. Uh, electronic motors, batteries, inverters, uh, electronic uh, control, as well as uh, regenerating uh, braking. And these are the technologies that we have built up to date, PHEV, EVB, uh, BEV and FCEV alike can benefit from that foundation. Now, we would like to leverage upon the foundation we have built. We would like to um, strive to achieve the current level of 1.5 million uh, annually, just not just in Japan, but globally. Uh, the foundational technology that I'm speaking of can be rolled out to e BEV as well as FCEV. Uh, in other words, what we have built so far is truly the strength of Toyota, uh, which can further uh, contribute to the popularization of uh, electrified vehicles. However, when we speak about this volume of 5.5 million, uh, it really goes beyond um, uh, what we have currently. It's a dramatic change in stance. Of course, over the 20 years, we have built up to the speed of 1.5 million, but we're now talking about 5.5 uh, million in 2020, which means that we would like to have triple volume in just half of the time frame that we have uh, uh, surpassed from the start of this uh, achievement, uh, which will require huge uh, efforts on our part. Uh, that is why I'm saying drastic change in stance. Now, amongst the 5.5 uh, million, uh, that includes 1 million zero emission cars. Um, uh, speaking of uh, Nissan Leaf uh, example, uh, when you look at the battery capacity alone um, that is equipped on board uh, the current uh, widely sold uh, BEV, uh, that's 50 percent the capacity. So. Um, looking at uh, uh, volume itself, it's uh, 50 times the hybrid uh, battery. Um, and when we think about the cruising range, of course, uh, JCT08, um, it's about uh, 50, 100 uh, uh, kilometers. So speaking of you know becoming par uh, in terms of the cruising uh, range, you can imagine how much more batteries are uh, in need, uh, how much more advancement in that technology is indeed in need. Now, uh, in order to um, a widespread uh, electrified uh, vehicles, uh, the key factor indeed is uh, batteries, as I aforementioned. Um, not just the supply capability, but also um, the energy density, which has to do with the cruising range or uh, charge time. Uh, of course, uh, that affects the uh, vehicle cost uh, largely. So we feel that for the development and production of such, uh, we need to do um, um, a large scale investment. So, towards uh, 2030, uh, 1.5 trillion yen investment will be made uh, as we calculate as R&D and CapEx. Uh, just the other day, you heard us step on the axle towards that goal. Now, uh, from the start of our business, uh, Toyota has focused upon the importance of batteries, and we have uh, spent uh, needed uh, efforts in the development of such. Uh, the uh, old solid uh, state batteries that uh, we are aiming to bring to the market for uh, practical use by the uh, uh, early 2020s, uh, of course, will contribute largely for the uh, benefit uh, and performance increase because it's smaller and lighter and also the cost benefit. Uh, we've just made an announcement, as you heard, on December 13, 2007. 
combining the uh, strength of Panasonic, uh, which is a leader in the automotive uh, battery. Um, combining that with uh, Toyota's know-how, we believe that the alliance will uh, help to uh, uh, achieve uh, further uh, in terms of developing uh, prismatic batteries for automotive use. Uh, of course, uh, this is, was the final piece that we had been aiming for. Uh, now, with this piece in place, of course, as a key factor fulfilled, uh, we have a, a strong um, uh, wind uh, helping us uh, towards our goal. So the re we are ready for the electrification. Now. Um, 5.5 million units in 2030. Uh, we have already steered our ship uh, towards that challenge. It was driving strongly forward. Now, lastly, let me touch upon social infrastructure. The electrification of mobility and the resources and energy issues cannot be separated. Uh, Toyota will not only uh, produce and sell uh, electrified vehicles to the, the society, but also work upon uh, social infrastructure. Uh, first of all, in terms of resources, we will first focus on batteries. As the electrification continues, of course, the use of batteries will increase as the number of such units increase. Uh, batteries, of course, require rare metals such as Ni, nickel, and Li, lithium. Uh, of course, uh, um, we would also be thinking about uh, uh, recycle and reuse uh, because we need to be considerate of industrial waste being produced as a result. Now, as you know, so far, Toyota has always been engaged in reuse and recycle of hybrid uh, batteries. We would like to do the same uh, with uh, electrified vehicles, uh, especially when it comes to uh, HEV reuse and recycle. Um, and uh, uh, BEV, uh, also in the same regard, uh, we would like to reuse uh, such batteries uh, for um, stationary uh, chargeable battery. Um, that uh, would be is something that we can do. And power plants and uh, business uh, facilities such as uh, factories uh, will benefit uh, from uh, such use uh, of uh, renewable energy, uh, recyclable energy. Uh, we have already uh, started actions uh, with a stationary uh, storage battery. Uh, we would like to show you some examples using this slide. Um, one that I'd like to highlight is the use of uh, uh, hydrogen station. Uh, uh, we have uh, decided to form a new company, uh, which will be public-private uh, enterprise uh, incorporation. Uh, we believe that uh, we need to use uh, electricity and hydrogen quite well. Um, that would be the foundation of the energy that the society will stand upon. Now, in, for the uh, electrified uh, uh, mobility, uh, we believe that uh, there is much we can do in uh, cooperation with uh, the government in place. Now, uh, currently, uh, Toyota uh, is positioned to lead the electrified vehicles market. When we look at 2016 performance amongst the 3.2 million units, Toyota alone had sold 1.4 uh, electrified vehicles. Our sh market share exceeds 40%. So every one in two uh, electrified vehicles sold today uh, is uh, our car. Uh, we have been the first to enter into such a market, as you know. As uh, President uh, Toyoda explained to you the other day, uh, we always consider to be a challenger. We would like to continue to be the market leader, uh, providing electrified vehicles which matches the which match the customer's uh, needs and the world uh, market uh, need. So, uh, so far we have touched upon uh, the details of our products, technology, as well as uh, social infrastructure. Uh, those are the efforts that we would like to be uh, making in encompassing all directions. Um, and the uh, company formation uh, for uh, EV, uh, EV CAS indeed, uh, vehicle body cannot be developed uh, uh, away from the battery uh, development. In other words, the two need to go um, hand in hand. It's almost like playing catches in the baseball. Uh, from next year, uh, 
thereafter um, the current alliance uh, companies as well as any additional alliance uh, in the future uh, will strive for the same goal. Uh, in other words, it will not be just a Toyota uh, automotive uh, units, but also uh, other manufacturers' automotive units. I think the collaborative uh, volume uh, will uh, definitely be in the scope. Uh, the Zeb uh, speed, you know, what would be the speed of uh, such progress? Uh, we always need to uh, keep an eye on CAFE, which is uh, in the number of um, cars uh, which are really in, including a PHEV and other types, amounting to 4.5 million units uh, altogether. Um, so electrification, intelligence, and information, uh, those are the strategic points of uh, focus on our part. We would like to contribute for a sustainable society and customers' smiles, indeed. Uh, to kind of recap, uh, electrification uh, is uh, uh, very importantly uh, based upon uh, batteries. We have made many announcements so far, and the last piece to complete this puzzle on our part is battery, the key issue, key component of battery. And that's the purpose of this press conference. Uh, of course, uh, beyond today, uh, we would be making uh, uh, further uh, detailed efforts through the year, and next year uh, we have a very fresh start for the new uh, aims that uh, I have for mentioned. Uh, so again, thank you very much for attending this conference, and please uh, continue to focus upon our efforts going forward. We now like to entertain the questions. About half an hour for the question answer session. A uh, person with a, a question, please speak to the microphone. Please raise your hand and please speak to the microphone. Please identify your name and the uh, affiliation company. Thank you. We'd like to uh, give a chance to as many people as possible to ask questions. So please ask up to two questions per person. Thank you. Chikaoka Nikkei, manufacturing monozukuri. Well, uh, that uh, about this uh, uh, electrification, that this uh, engine development, how is it being progressing? I'm concerned about electrification of the engine because the new engine development, well, amongst different engines, the, the uh, combustion efficiency should be raised to 50%. Mazda and Nissan are trying to develop a brand new uh, engine. So engine itself is uh, evolving markedly, I think. So at one time, your company, Toyota, also was uh, developing this uh, the high efficiency combustion uh, engine. And then uh, you made announcement on that uh, high efficiency engine as well. Well, what about this uh, new development of a new kind of efficient engine? And my second question is that uh, to what extent uh, on the BEV and EV, the merged figures were un announced. But what about the BEV per se, 2025 or 2030? How many units, tens of thousands of units, do you intend to produce the BEV against the total electrified vehicle population? Well, about the engine combustion efficiency, engine itself, uh, the development in the future was the gist of your question. I, I said earlier that the 2030, Electrified vehicles, 4.5 million, still will be mounted with the engine. The other 50% still will have the engine. In other words, 90 million units are the target by CAFE. To achieve that, uh, uh, in addition to the conventional engine, hybrid basic uh, special the engine, and it's uh, a com uh, the combustion efficiency must be improved. So combustion engine technology will continue to be evolved and developed. Better the uh, combustion efficiency, then the hybrid and PHV electrification technology will enjoy the benefit. So we will continue to develop the better engine, conventional engine as well. Turning to BEV, what will be the total units for BEV, battery EV? Well, as I said, that uh, it's not that we decide what we want to do. What customer wants to want to buy? They will determine what they want to buy. Or the Z, ZV, uh, ZV regulation, there are many other regulations. How the regulation will advance or infrastructure availability and progress might determine. So 
uh, uh, ballpark figures that they have uh, one million units. Uh, the assumption, depending upon scenario, the proportion or uh, ratio might change. So as of now, uh, I, I cannot give you the exact figure. Uh, this is uh, Kudo of Nikkei. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, and uh, I would like to just verify on the definition. Uh, you said 5.5 uh, million and over in 2030. Is this Toyota alone or Toyota Group uh, collaboratively, including Zaihatsu? That's one question. The other question is, at that time, uh, Toyota's uh, sales unit number at that time, if you could uh, refer to that. The second point is regarding the 1 million uh, ZEB uh, to be achieved in 2030. Uh, what are the milestones or limitations you might see in R&T? Uh, you said 1.5 trillion investment investment for electrification, but for zero emission cars, if you have a breakdown of that uh, investment uh, in terms of uh, uh, resources as well as personnel, uh, and also the lifetime for gasoline's 13 years, but for ZEB, um, what about the durability? Are you going to aim about the same lifetime of 13 years? Now, uh, thank you for your question. First of all, regarding those numbers, um, the group as a whole uh, is uh, a bit beyond 10 million units now. Uh, so in 2030, how many uh, would be the number as we calculate? And, and then we, we, you know, it's not like we, sub, you know, multiply that by 50%. Rather than that, what we did is to ZEB and PH, uh, EV hybrid, you know, we come, came up with the numbers that we aim to sell. So it's kind of a, a built from the bottom uh, kind of uh, uh, strategy formation rather than uh, backtracking from 2013 goal. And uh, the numbers that I have aforementioned are Toyota alone. Uh, we believe that as uh, the consortium, or so to speak, grow uh, bigger, uh, the number of targets, uh, of course, will grow bigger for the entire group. Um, so the number of electrified vehicles, uh, as we increase on our collaborative parties, uh, will include. Uh, the next uh, point that you raised, which is 1 million units uh, for ZEB, um, we I have uh, already talked about uh, Prius uh, uh, hybrid uh, 0.75 kilowatt hour for uh, that Prius. Um, and the recent uh, comparative point we see is 40. So, you know, it's time is 50. And in terms of uh, uh, mass, it needs to be about 20 times more. So, uh, converging from hybrid to EV, of course, the battery size and the weight, um, it's a multiply of, you know, more than 10. Um, so, you know, our uh, hybrid. Uh, uh, Battery is still is a, a is, you know reasonable effort for us, but uh, um, in terms of what we aim to achieve and the batteries required for that would be you know multiples of the current battery efforts. So say um, uh, one million EVs. Uh, electrified vehicles, uh, that would require the battery uh, production of the multiples of a uh, 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 plug-in. Uh, so that's basically what we are saying. And um, the global, in the global picture, uh, if we are foreseeing 20 percent or 30 percent being EV, I just want to emphasize on the battery requirements at that time, uh, you know, in that time frame uh, within that picture, and who will be the manufacturer of such batteries. There are some risks I can mention, which is the material cost uh, increase, um, and also the battery, you know, it's the equipment uh, industry, so they need to be manufactured in a clean environment, which will require a lot of initial investment and also running maintenance cost is high. Uh, from uh, lithium to uh, all solid state, uh, such conversion may require another uh, large size investment. You know, so again, the battery requirement is huge, and who 
is going to invest uh, to make sure that the manufacturing is par with it, uh, having enough capacity, capacity uh, and such. Um, so, you know, that needs to be in place uh, before uh, all electrification uh, visions uh, that I have aforementioned uh, can be achieved. So in the last uh, one to two years, uh, I'm sure you were exposed to the announcements uh, that Toyota had made. And I believe by that you can see the horizon of our future vision, what it is that we are focusing upon, where it is that we are aiming to go to uh, with our collaboration with uh, Panasonic as you heard in our recent announcement, uh, we have filled the last piece of puzzle uh, to this grand picture. Now we can accelerate uh, and, and, and really go towards uh, our grand goal. Uh, in terms of the lifetime, uh, of course, uh, uh, battery uh, technology uh, will be the important foundation to build up to that. You know, what will be the durability, uh, lifetime, um, and what are some uh, technologies involved in that? What are some control factors involved in that? Uh, in other words, the use of batteries alone or the production of the batteries alone uh, will not solve the entire picture. Uh, that needs to be developed in uh, collaboration uh, with uh, uh, the automotive body itself and uh, the two together, the, the car and the battery, uh, can uh, bring us to the achievement. Um, so the announcement we just made the other day uh, really uh, finalized and completed our vision for electrification. Ogawa of Nikkei Automotive. So my first question is about the EV development. What is the division of roles among yourselves? So Mazda and you uh, had an announcement. A new company launch was announced as well. According to my understanding, your relationship with Mazda, you will develop the platform, the like underbody and so on of the EV, uh, BEV, uh, covering a compact car, a small car to the big cars. And then uh, the, for the commercial vehicles, a sale has to be common at once to lower the cost. So that's my first question to, for clarification. My second question is that now Toyota in the BEV, EV area are making the very active stance, that the three-stage approach to really push forward. In the past, you have a hybrid technology. You say, oh, we are ready to launch EV, BEV anytime. Regulatory situation has not uh, changed uh, drastically recently. But this fall, the Volkswagen, uh, uh, announced that the big investment. So maybe d did you uh, consider v Volkswagen's attitude in making a more uh, the proactive stance on uh, BEV and, and the EV development? About the division of uh, labor or the division of roles amongst the uh, different companies, like Mazda, Denso, and Toyota announced about the, uh, the development of EV CAS, a new company, to collaborate. Basically, the vehicle platform, body platform, is one just one of the areas. But the entire unit, but the very special ones like models and inverters and others will be developed. And battery itself, uh, the, we have to have a very special requirement, a specification, in order to have a full capacity of the EV, BEV. So standalone battery is not just the issue, but entire uh, battery could be uh, installed as a package in order to extend the lifespan and durability. What about the required cooling function? So all these specification requirements are taken into account. That is why this EVCAS was built to do the, uh, all this comprehensive service. If that uh, property is achieved, then the lithium battery might uh, uh, be combined to a certain extent. If a solid state battery is used, what kind of feature or property should we aim at in its specification? So that is a kind of this uh, division of role. So DV CAS, EV CAS company uh, will uh, actually uh, the, uh, stipulated a very detailed specification to the battery companies, but why? We became so active and offensive or making such announcement on the BEV zone. Is that because we are responding to the Volkswagen? Maybe that was the gist of your question. But anyhow, for some time, for a long time, uh, this is not the direct answer to your question, but for some time, we are saying we are not lagging behind. We do already have the technology for BEV and EV. 
we've been conveying that message. But still, some people say, oh, you are behind. Or some people say, Toyota, you are not behind. We know it. But why don't you launch a BEV? So that was quite a convincing uh, statement by you. So we can just launch a BEV tomorrow. So the thing is that uh, toward BEV and EV, what is the challenge? What should be solved to make a step forward? We have to clearly explain what we are doing exactly. So we are thinking about this for some time, as I mentioned today, and then as the earlier uh, I mentioned in my answer. But battery is the barrier which has to be clearly solved first, because it was a missing piece. We say all oh, the batteries can produce uh, in mass production and so on. That's not the scenario Toyota can think of, because battery was the issue. So, so far, we produce our own hybrid batteries. So we have to have a complete good battery story. And then when our desirable BEV and EV can be launched, that clear message should be launched. And some people were waiting, why you haven't launched the BEV yet? So that is why we are ready to accept any comments on these things. I am Kawamura of GG Press. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to ask a question. I might be a bit redundant, but want to clarify. Uh, my question is regarding the alliance and your relationship. You talked about uh, EV uh, role division for CAS, uh, for EV CAS. But uh, you know, looking at 5.5 uh, 5 million, your relationship with Matsuda, Daihatsu, Suzuki, uh, and there are companies uh, uh, in automotive industry which are not in a partnership with you now. Are you going to um, combine your hands with them, collaborate together, uh, or not? That's my question uh, number one. And uh, the second question is, uh, uh, your effort for all solid state uh, aims in early 2020. What is your relationship with uh, Panasonic uh, in relation to the old state? And you talked about those uh, target numbers uh, to achieve in terms of the units. Uh, how does Panasonic uh, get involved in that? I believe your number one question, number two question are quite uh, interrelated in terms of my reply. Uh, the companies which are already in alliance do not have to. It's not like they're all required to use this uh, battery that we are about to develop. Uh, EVCAS basically would like to take the leadership in determining the specs of the batteries uh, needed uh, and uh, which battery maker to actually use will have to be decided on a part of the OEMs uh, respectively and separately. Uh, so, you know, all those alliance companies will independently make a decision as to which battery maker to use. And speaking of uh, companies which are not in the alliance, the way to think about that is, you know, it's not just uh, electrified vehicles, but also, um, uh, you know, Toyota and Toyota Group's stance upon um, the vehicle concept uh, as a whole uh, for electrification. In other words, uh, with Jeff. Zev and Cafe, uh, those achievements uh, uh, require quite hurdles uh, to be clarified. So when we talk about batteries or uh, EV hybrid, PHP, FCB, uh, all these units uh, need to be uh, leveraged, uh, used to the fullest. Uh, if there are any such requests coming specifically from OEMs, uh, we're willing to open doors. I would like to do the same with b batteries. Um, and the uh, approval and the fit-in uh, is very difficult, then uh, we would like to have a, uh, you know, be ha have a solution you know, in terms of the unit. Um, so, you know, when we think about the environment, once uh, we hold uh, on to a good solution, then that solution uh, shall be used for a wider use, um, you know, more uh, use uh, benefit to be shared by the others, so to speak. The second point was uh, regarding our announcement uh, with Panasonic and what is the uh, positioning of uh, all state batteries in that uh, partnership. Um, Mr. Gloa, which is EVP uh, of our company uh, at the Motor Show, uh, talked about uh, at early 2020s uh, as a time to commercialize uh, for uh, such vehicles. 
When we talk about uh, 1 million uh, electrified vehicles uh, or BEVs, and the, the difficulty of coming up with sufficient batteries will be a, a very difficult task. I believe you have fully understood that. And if we were doing it uh, just internally with our uh, investment, at the time of manufacturing, Toyota alone cannot uh, achieve that. We will need to uh, make that achievement in collaboration with other uh, companies vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, battery uh, makers. So we believe that uh, R&D process uh, combining Toyota's strength and Panasonic's strength, coming up with the uh, the shape of it, the packing of it, uh, and whatnot, uh, and the uh, spec. Uh, the capacity, of course, uh, will be a very useful process. Uh, we will not uh, separate uh, all state from uh, lithium uh, or any other uh, types. Uh, it, it is a kind of a wholesome, uh, comprehensive effort, uh, which I think will complete the full circle uh, as a business. And we believe that starting off together will be benefit for that whole circle benefit. I have two questions. First point is about battery. Uh, what do you think? Whether should that be in-house made or outside sourced? Because uh, like a Peve, I don't know. But basically, you like to develop internally and de build in-house. Is that the right understanding? In-house production. This business model compared to the other automobile companies, outsourcing is a mainstream procuring from outside. But the vertically uh, integrated the production is only you and Tesla, I think, uh, maintain as a policy. National uh, the government of China is really investing, like uh, the solar power and the panel and so on. The costs are going down. So the, the, uh, the in-house production has merits and demerits. What do you think about R&D expense? Like FCB will be developed, and you will have the omnidirectional or comprehensive uh, encompassing activity, two trillion yen or something that uh, you invest in R&D. So I think the budget gets uh, difficult. Uh, you are no longer pursuing the volume. Uh, so how do you manage uh, this uh, R&D expense in the future? How about uh, your cost sharing with other companies? The in-house production versus uh, outsourcing, of course, uh, that is the major the uh, decision with regard to the production of battery. The solid-state battery uh, launching for the first time, for sure, we developed in-house about lithium battery. The, it's getting better. So the current uh, production line, we will consult uh, with the Panasonic, but that. Uh, how uh, is the speed of uh, increased production in the required investment? And we have to uh, strike a balance uh, to decide which part we produce in-house versus outside procurement. We haven't talked to Panasonic yet, but maybe globally, there are the companies who might have this uh, production capacity that we outsource outside the fabricators to produce the uh, battery, maybe. Ch when you think of China itself, it a huge volume is expected. So maybe local possible production together with a local battery maker in China, that might create a win-win scenario for both parties. That might be a possible scenario. But as of now, 1 million units or 4.5 million units are the target. We just uh, announced that we like to work hard to achieve those goals. Uh, we have to satisfy different regulations, and the customer needs are changing, or the battery itself. Uh, we have to create a competitive, high-quality battery. Uh, those have to be taken into account to consider the future possibility of different forms of collaboration, including the in-house production and uh, outsourcing. So we do not have the exact uh, specific plan as to that split. That the, uh, the volume I mentioned earlier might uh, uh, be, be difficult to be satisfied by just in-house development. As to the R&D uh, expense or investment, Personally, my work, uh, as far as my work is concerned, I've been involved in the, the business planning, alliance, and strategy. Those are my jurisdiction. Uh, to the uh, engineers, I tell them, oh, you spend too much money on uh, uh, R&D. I used to complain. They say, 
if you complain too much, why don't you do it myself? So next year, I will be in charge of the R&D. So finally, we have created a good alliance and partners, and we now like to realize a good R&D. So I'd be responsible to demand more R&D budget from the head office, but anyway, Basically, one trillion level is this uh, Toyota R&D. What can we do under this one trillion in budget? And basically, within the business uh, balance sheet, we have to think it in that uh, well-balanced form. So in a way, scrap and build is a good policy. We might be overspending in some area. Maybe we have to shift that money to a more advanced area, like battery development and so on. So it's like a scrap and build concept applied to the budget allocation as well. In terms of R&D budget, is it just uh, good to have the higher level? No. Uh, it's same to the capital investment. Even though you have big budget, if you don't have uh, enough uh, uh, capable people to do it, they cannot spend money wisely. If they spend the money, they just uh, waste money. Uh, in other way, as I said, that the R&D budget, as far as that's concerned, how effectively, efficiently do you use the money to achieve a good outcome? So that is a, a, the optimal business uh, practice, and that is a big challenge we are faced with. And now electrification is a key word uh, for this uh, press conference today. But uh, a year and a half ago, we introduced a new company system and the, it is a part of this overall trend because uh, let me uh, well the, we make profit in total but when you scrutinize the model breakdown uh, they have a big gap some money making model versus not the small car making for example toyota compact company is making small cars they are hardly making any good profit on the other hand what about the tiny uh, compact car maker mini car maker, like Daihatsu, they were making like a hundred billion yen, like Suzuki, making more profit, even though they're making such a tiny uh, mini cars. So is the way we use money, uh, is that uh, really uh, spent wisely and effectively? We have to learn uh, more seriously with the others. So that uh, that's why we established this uh, company's organization. And then we set up all these uh, alliance with other companies to learn their practice. The one trillion budget should be more wisely and effectively spent. So it's an overall grand trend. So the budget, uh, the absolute term, uh, the figure budget is not uh, uh, just sufficient. The way we have to change our do, uh, practice uh, through electrification, but the way we do business every day should also be improved. That's uh, overall uh, practice that we like to improve. Wall Street Journal, runners, I have two questions, please. Uh, number one, uh, in the U.S. Uh, Toyota dealer, uh, what would be the day when uh, a consumer can go to that and buy an EV uh, electrified vehicle? And this 1.5 trillion investment, uh, please give me the time frame. So uh, when would be the day when uh, a consumer can go to a, a U.S. A Toyota dealer and buy a uh, electrified vehicle? Um, our public relations policy basically says that we cannot talk about uh, product strategy. Uh, my question to you actually would be, you know, when would be the, the date when America has that sentiment to wanting to buy an <laughs> electrified vehicle? That was a very good question. Uh, I would struggle to try to answer that. Uh, uh, but uh, at Nissan, uh, they, what they were saying is that there may not be a, a much volume of purchase, but they are selling leaf. Uh, that's their strategical positioning, even if uh, they do not make uh, uh, you know, good profit. Uh, is Toyota going to uh, you know, place the same strategy in place, or are you for the uh, revenue? Well, um, so without the uh, specific target date, I uh, offer the following. Uh, basic line of thinking is uh, when we talk about electrification, the ZEB um, uh, regulations uh, is uh, something that we keep in mind. Um, uh, hydrogen will be our answer to ZEB. Uh, and. Uh, you know, local uh, efforts, uh, uh, of course, combined with the central efforts. 
but uh, as they become tougher and tougher, uh, what would be the infrastructure catch-up uh, pace and the EV uh, electrified vehicle or BEV market itself? Uh, how uh, are the customers be ready to accommodate? How willing would the customers be uh, to accept uh, BEVs? Uh, we would like to keep that in mind um, to determine the pace of our, um, you know, uh, widespread uh, adoption. Um, basically, we have this uh, basic uh, fundamental uh, technology and the upper body, the uh, uh, body uh, platform and whatnot. And then thereafter uh, is the completed cards. Um, it, it's unthinkable that we would just ship to China. We would include uh, US and uh, other locations as well. So in the reasonable early part of uh, 2020s, uh, I believe we'll see that day that you are asking in your question. Uh, so that will be the task that I will be uh, uh, making efforts upon starting January 1, 2018. So ask me that question again, if you would. And now you talked about 1.5 trillion uh, investment, the time frame of such. Um, the uh, current uh, battery R&D that uh, you know, basically added by what we will spend next year and whatnot. So, uh, 1.5 trillion is uh, from next year to 2030 um, to come up with the uh, battery technology for the volume of the cars that we aim to sell. Um, about the half of 1.5 trillion, I believe, will be invested uh, for battery uh, R&D. Thank you for your valuable input. I'm Nezu of Nikkei Electronics. I have two questions. The first of all, that the electrification have three criteria. The one is the battery, and then you mentioned mostly on uh, battery. What about motor and inverter? Basically, that the, your company will develop it in-house, is that the right understanding? Or BSA or other Nissan or Honda uh, are doing, but uh, they are strong. Uh, they are working with a motor supplier outside. They so set, they set up a j joint venture to procure motors. So what's your thought on the motor inverters? That's my se first question. My second question is that the, you have formed a collaboration with the Panasonic, so you will start to consider different ways of collaboration. But uh, this time, through this collaboration with the, the Panasonic, the f last piece of the electrification is already satisfied. But uh, you announced that you start to consider the collaboration, but you are already saying that the last missing piece is already failed. So, the, so what uh, is... Uh, uh, why do you think that the last missing piece is already failed, even though you just are uh, starting a feasibility study? Well, the first, as to the first question about the motor and inverter, in-house development uh, is not really the case because Denso and Icing, they are the Toyota Group companies. They are already producing those. So it's not that uh, just develop in-house, but uh, we already have that capacity in-house and uh, uh, collaborate further. If outside people would like to use our technology, we are willing to offer. And so some of the basic technology uh, we would like to uh, use and summon all the technology of the Toyota Group companies. We like to maintain our open stance in that point. The second question is very good. You really pinpointed the good part of the uh, issue. Well, we've been talking about collaboration, but Toyota side approached Matsushita or the Panasonic, and then we share the same and common uh, understanding of the problem. In other words, that uh, to develop the battery, the framework is already agreed upon between the two companies. Based upon the, pro the uh, overall framework, what about the tiny pieces and the parts? Because the basic framework is already agreed upon between two companies. That's the agreement. But the different specific areas are to be worked out from now on one by one. But we have to expedite this. So we will, of course, have a feasibility study. But it's not that you start to write uh, from this uh, scratch. It's not the case. We, we already have the, the, the overall format uh, framework. We are just uh, uh, need to start to paint the color. So 
the, not just uh, Toyota and Panasonic as our alliance partners, it's not limited to just two of us. In other words, so many batteries have to be supplied in the future in the world. Globally, not too many companies are capable of producing huge amount of batteries. So we are the uh, allies in uh, here in Japan, Panasonic and Toyota, and then we should have a Japan original battery producers, uh, suppliers. And then we might work with the other battery suppliers and work together globally. And then uh, electrification should further be promoted for vehicles through that uh, open partners. It's not that we will set back and then uh, uh, this will end he, uh, as it is, because it's going to be open uh, improvement and expansion in the future. Thank you very much. This concludes this session. We'd like to end this part of the uh, session. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you for being here today once again.